I have completed eight different islands in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is a little bit shocking to me. I thought it was more than that. I feel like some of you are gonna think that's a lot, but to me, I feel like I've been doing so many different islands. To know that I've only done eight is a surprise. But today, we are going to be ranking those eight islands. I'm gonna go from worst to best in my eyes, and I just wanna see how I've progressed, uh, what styles I tend to like more than the others, and I just wanna kind of showcase the islands I've finished. Obviously, I'm still working on other islands, but will I ever finish another island? I'm not really sure. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We are going to start off with number eight, and this is a little bit obvious because it was my first attempt at actually really sitting down designing an island. This is right when I got into Cottagecore. This is my original version of Nedia. This is the island that I did my first video here on YouTube um, talking about paths on this island, but this is the island that was featured in that video. And I actually, I like this island. I will say, I don't even know if I have a completed tour of this because in that video, not everything is finished. I was still kind of working on it and I like it. It's kind of at the beginning of when custom patterns started to get really popular. Everyone was using the nine piece, the path on their islands. So obviously I was as well. I think what I don't like about this island is I wasn't really using as many items as I do now. I wasn't focused on the overall flow of the island. So it's a little disjointed. Some of the things I used to do, I'm just, I don't like them as much anymore. So this island is definitely my least favorite of all of the islands that I've completed. Now, before we get into the next island, I wanna say thank you so much to glassesusa.com for sponsoring another one of my videos. I don't know about you, but I love shopping online, and that includes shopping for my glasses. With GlassesUSA.com, they cut out the middleman so you can get your glasses for affordable prices at up to 70% off retail price. They have over 9,000 prescription eyeglasses and sunglasses to choose from, including in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E. Plus, they offer designer brands like Ray-Ban, Gucci, Oakley, and so many more, so there is definitely something for everyone. It's a risk-free shopping experience, so you can shop completely stress-free. They have free shipping and free returns. All of my frames have the blue light blocking lenses, so I can sit here and work without any additional strain to my eyes. They have so many different tools on the site to help you out, including a prescription scanner app, so you can scan your lenses and figure out what prescription you have. They have a quiz that you can take if you're feeling stuck on which frames to choose, and it will narrow down the selection a little bit for you. And my favorite tool of all is the virtual try on tool. So once you find some frames that you wanna try, you upload your picture to the site and you can see what those frames look like on your face. So if you were interested in any of the frames that I showed off today, or if you just wanted to go pick out some for yourself, make sure you click on my link down in the description. Thank you so much, glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back into ranking my islands. All right, if I'm being honest, number seven and number six, are very, very close in my eyes on where they rank. But I think for number seven, I'm going to have to go with my island, Kalatara. This island is a fall island. I am pretty sure it's one of the first fall islands that I decorated. Definitely the first one that I completed. And, and it's just not as detailed as I would like it to be. I feel like just like any of my islands, I kind of get to the end and I tend to rush things. There are a lot of areas that I really love on this island. I have a villager neighborhood that I love and I have a rock garden on that island, which I think is really cool. So there are definitely some areas that I love, but overall, it's not one of my favorites. Now coming in at number six, which is basically on the same level as number seven, is my Christmas themed island. This was the first island that I created on stream. So I didn't start streaming until several months after I started YouTube, and this was the first island that we were working on. 
It does have a lot of fun areas. It's got a Christmas market. It's got a place for letters to Santa. It has a toy shop, a Christmas tree farm. I do like a lot of the individual areas. This one was definitely rushed because I was trying to finish it before Christmas and it got down to the wire and I just had to throw some stuff together. Seems to be a theme with all of my islands is that I'm rushing it at the end, but you know, it has, it has a lot of charm to it and I'm happy with the way it turned out. I don't do winter islands very often and I'm glad that I have one that's completed. These top five islands are a lot harder for me to rank them because I put a lot of effort into all of these and it's just hard to narrow it down. They're all very, very different. So I'm gonna do my best. And I know some people are gonna be upset about the order of these because I know some people love certain islands over other ones that I've done, but I'm just trying to rank them as best I can. So coming in at number five is my coastal Christmas island. This one, oh, I loved making it. I loved making it. It was the first island that I started working on after the 2.0 update came out. I was really excited to use the new items. I loved the theme because I had never seen anyone do it before. I really like combining different themes to make unique things. And this one, it really, it holds a special place in my heart. Honestly, I know that sounds silly, but I really do love this one. The entrance, especially. Uh, the area in the back where I have all of the uh, villager houses with the wheat fields. I love that area as well. Uh, the boardwalk area looks really cool. So it's definitely, it has its highlights. But I would say overall, as a fully fleshed out island, it's definitely, it doesn't quite hit the mark. And once again, it's because I rushed it. I was over it. I was tired of doing it and I just wanted to be done to move on to something else. This one I didn't even save the dream address for because there's another island that I love so much more that I didn't want to save over it. So no dream address. Honestly, only two of these I think still have dream addresses because I normally tend to save over my islands. I don't always restart. So I will have down in the description the dream addresses that I have plus the tours of each of these islands on my channel. So if you wanna go back and look at any of them at the full islands, you will have that option. Coming in at number four is my farm core island. And hear me out, I love this island. It has so much charm. I love that I decided to use the in-game pathing on this island. That definitely made it more challenging, but I think overall, it looks really nice. I love the orchard at the entrance. I thought that was unique and I really like it. This island was created before the 2.0 update. So we have to keep in mind that I did not have many crop options at this point. We just had pumpkins and that's it, right? I'm pretty sure that was it. All of the other crops I had to improvise and use different things. The watermelon beach balls, I used the stunted bamboo, I used the different plants, different house plants, I used the tree's bounty lamp for a tomato farm. There was all kinds of things. All kinds of things that we used <laughs> to create different farms. I had so many farms on this island. Plus, the amount of barrels on this island is unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. Taking them all down took forever. I love a good barrel though. So I, I really do love it. It's not, it's just not my favorite. It's not my favorite of my islands. I would love to do another farm island now that we have actual crops. So maybe sometime in the future that will be happening, but I know this is some of y'all's favorite island, especially. I've seen a lot of comments about this island and I understand. I understand why it's a favorite, but it's not my favorite. Top 
three. <laughs> it's getting difficult now. And I've gone back and forth, back and forth on these top three. They kind of all, I, I just rotate, but we are going to narrow it down. Coming in at number three is my spooky island. Spooky island. Oh, this one was so fun to make. And the evolution of this one. This one just came so far along the way. And I really started to realize at this point in my designing journey, just how many items you need for me, for it to look how I want it to look. Because the amount of pumpkins that I used on this island, the amount of spooky trees that I used on this island, so many. I feel like there are a lot of standouts on this island because you've got the entrance, which is probably one of my favorite entrances that I've created. I just love how full it is and it really, it does such a great job of setting the tone for the whole island. And I think that's really important when creating an island entrance. Then the main highlight, the number one highlight for me is the abandoned carnival. I had so much fun creating this, but it was the most challenging thing that I've ever built. I, I had to try so many different things. I don't normally use simple panels, so that was a big challenge for me, but the end result, I absolutely love it. And this came before 2.0, so I didn't have any carnival items to work with, especially not ones that looked abandoned. I think we had a couple of things that I probably could have used, but... They just weren't the exact vibe that I was going for. And yeah, I just think the ab abandoned carnival turned out so, so nice. Then my other standout on this island is the spooky forest, which then leads up to kind of this pumpkin area, which overlooks the museum, which is on an island in the water. Those are my favorite areas. And yeah, I really, I really love this one. This one almost made its way up to two for me, but there's one that just, overall, I just liked it a little bit more, and that is my Spring Core Island. So coming in at number two is my Spring Core slash slightly Fairy Core Island. I love this one. This is one of my favorite, favorite themes in the game. I love how green it is. And another one of my favorite entrances that I've done is the spring court entrance. Plus, I think this is probably my best terraforming. This by far is the best terraforming I've done and the most intricate. Normally, I kind of tend to give up on my terraforming because especially the waterscaping, it's just, it gets out of hand. But on this one, I have a nice like walkway, a little uh, meadow of sorts um, through a cliffside. I have the fairy mountain on this island. Um, so a lot of cool terraformed areas. And I just, this one, it's just so colorful and it makes me happy to look at. I think I did go slightly overboard with theming things to certain colors. And I wish I had had a little bit more of a uniform concept with this one like the front feels like a completely different island from the back i feel like there's a slight disconnect there and they don't really work well together but i love them both individually so much so all of that being said that one is number two i am very proud of it and i know a lot of you like it as well but number one my favorite island that i've done is actually my no terraforming island this island was an autumn themed, no terraforming island. I loved this one. However, I feel like this one got me into a big giant funk after creating it where terraforming is now a huge struggle for me. But this one, oh, I just, I absolutely love it. I love the entrance. I loved having a little neighborhood at the entrance. The orchard that leads into the park 
and then there's just this overgrown area by the river. Ugh, there's so many areas I like on this island. The museum, which wasn't upgraded, and I have a butterfly garden over there. The areas on this island just make me so, so happy, and I'm so proud of it at the same time because I didn't have to terraform, and it just kind of proves that you don't have to terraform for your island to look nice, and anyone could have an island like this. So that is by far my favorite island. Those are my, those are my islands. Those are the rankings of all eight of my finished islands. Now I wanna know which one is your favorite, which one's your least favorite? Honestly, that's what I'm more curious about. Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to check out that link for glassesusa.com down in the description. Thank you so much again to them for sponsoring today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate if you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.